There's no police officer inside here in Chancellor Lane. Well, we're there. Well, there's a surprise. Our Shelly would be on the force here waiting for me to come back. Do you think he's given up on trying to catch you? Chief Inspector Britannia's? Most likely. It doesn't strike me as a time to give in easily. No, agreed. He's a dogged one, alright. Ciao, senora. What are you doing back here? Oh, sorry. I know you tried to, to help me get away before. There's just something I need to do at the scene of the crime, but it, maybe it's been solved already. Is why there are no police around here? I wish it had, but I haven't heard anything like that. There were police up and down the whole street until not long ago. But suddenly they all disappeared. Hmm, I see. I wonder where they all went. Well, I know, well let's not waste our chance to get inside the lucky clover, so come along. I have a feeling that was perfect he's doing, wasn't it? Ah, there aren't even any police in the shop now. At the scene of the crime, you'd expect at least one or two plus to be here, wouldn't you? Well, this is your chance then, is it? Get investigating. Yeah, this is obviously a clue. Look, Cheryl, do you see the chalk outline? That m must be where the issue was found. Yeah, other than that, you'd have no idea this was a murder scene. No, it all looks completely normal, doesn't it? The displays and shelves don't appear to have been disrupted. It's hard to imagine that a theft was a motive in, this, in that case. For example, it was someone she knew, someone who held a grudge. That's possible. It would explain why there are no signs of a struggle. Let me first investigate to get the hint coins, please. I'm assuming probably the hat there is important. Because again, Cat was talking about in the more in the beginning. So again, feels like it is important. Really nothing here. Oh wait. Nice. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I found all the three hint coins, I think. Oh, wait, there's something here. A oh, puzzle, of course. Everything looks neat and tidy in here as, as usual. No sign of a break in or anything. Ah! What is it, cat? Have you found a clue to identify the real killer? No, not a clue, the opposite, a puzzle. Bead Tangle To make sure some items of jewelry is... No, to make some items of jewelry This girl needs various pieces of cord, each with one red bead on them Using a special cutter that cuts in a circular shape Get the lengths of cord ready with just one cut The cord is not just joined up anywhere you can't see Press and hold it to pick up a circle and move into place where it need Okay So I'm gonna say like something probably is on something oh it's on top. So maybe one of these, maybe one of the small ones like this. This one maybe I don't think this one here is because it's pretty much at the edge there. Let's try this one here first. Mm, this should do it, I think. Yeah, and nice. You did the court is already time to make some jewelry. Do you really think that puzzle was for sale here? Mm, I don't know. That's the puzzle, isn't it? Uh, yeah, this one is also definitely a clue. That's an awkward place to play a good, isn't it? Or does it just look high from all the way down here? Shall use that mannequin's head up there to showcase her finest hats? Mm? Wait a minute, though. That's a little odd. What's odd? Or than the workings of your mind. <coughs> well, when I came here last night, 
the head was straight. Now, they, now it's at an angle. Told you, the workings of our minds are odd. We remember something like that. I do, and I'm sure I'm right, because I remember looking longly at that very head yesterday evening. So you're saying that between them and now, someone tipped the hat. The fiend. This is what I'm saying, yes, and I can't imagine Mr. Price doing it, so it was perhaps the killer. Alright, I take it all back. Perhaps you're not onto something. Let's investigate. Don't mind if I do. I'll just fat a mannequin's head down. Oh. What's that? It said it's dented out of shape. Look. Was it always like that? I don't know. There was always a hat on it. Soon I have been able to see. Hmm. I wonder why it got damaged. I'm starting to think this isn't a murder case and more like she accidentally died because she was trying to change the hat or put that a new one there. It fell on her head, fell on the floor and damaged, and then Britannia went in there, saw the scene, and instead of making it seem like, oh, eh, she died by accident, let's make it let's make it murder and accuse Catriel. I think that's what's happening here. It doesn't sit right to me, with me. There is no signs of anything out of the ordinary in here at all, or than the outline of a dead body. And if it's relevant, the dent on the mannequin's head. Yeah, if it is re if it's relevant. I wonder. Uh oh. What is it, Cheryl? Someone's coming in. It could be the fuzz. Hello, Laura. I'm right. I thought you'd be here, Catriel. Ah, Emiliana, as I expected. Oh, you were expecting me? Of course. You are a professional profiler, you know. I thought you'd have a hunch that I'd come back here. I don't approach to your hunches, Catriel. You might, but I prefer hard facts and scientific analysis. Your profile clearly identifies the fact that you'd have to come to the scene of the crime to investigate for yourself. And will Chief Inspector Britannia be joining us? No, he won't be coming. I fed him some bogus information. He was currently investigating some random and completely unrelated location. Ah, I see. So it was you who cleared all the police out of Chester Lane, was it? You gave them a false lead. Correct. But it don't matter that I did it for your benefit. At first I thought we needed to catch you in order to get the truth out of this matter. But I was wrong. Sorry? Britannia was clearly jumped to the conclusion here. He hasn't investigated through enough at all. His deductions are totally flawed. All I want to see is a proper investigation carried out. No corners cut. I don't like that. In other words, you didn't. You don't think I did it? I, I never said that. A proper investigation is all I said. That still sounds a lot like you believe I'm innocent. She's not wrong, you know. Va bene. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that I do believe you're innocent. That will be based on evidence, not some misplaced loyalty. So, do you have evidence? As a matter of fact, I do. I know that you've been telling the truth, that in itself is evidence. I can merely tell when someone is lying, you see. It's quite simple. Just like in this puzzle. Not sure why it came to a puzzle, but okay. Four people are talking next to a box with a 4x4 four four grid. Let's call them A, B, C, and D. Here's what each person says. There are two balls in each vertical line. There is one ball in each horizontal line. There is a ball in each of the four corners. The only person line here is A. Two of the four people are lying. So you know obviously D is lying because the only person lying here is A, but there are supposedly two people lying. So D is out, now the problem is we need to figure out which one is the other. Each slot can take one ball, so how many balls are next? Are there? So again, I'm assuming this guy is D and this guy is A. In their order, so this guy is lying, so E is out, put a cross on him E. Uh, now the question is...
I think maybe A is also online. Put a question mark on this one. But I think the answer is... 8. If my math is correct, which it cannot be. do it, I think. Puzzles are made for solving. I got it right, nice. Oh no, yeah, I was right in putting him in a question mark because he was actually telling the truth. It was the other one. It was, I think, I think it's B or I don't know which one it was. Only NC stories line with each other and B, yeah. So, you're a walking lie detector, Emiliana. Haha, <laughs> I see I lost your sense of humor despite being the focus of a manhunt. Allora, as a favor, I'll show you some interesting data. This is... This is your autopsy report. <coughs> Does it say she's dead? I knew that already. Let's see. Ah, look at this. She suffered a blow to the head. And bruising to the chest? What does it all, what does it all tell us? Ooh, bruising to the chest. Yes, there's something of a mystery, I admit. If I'm reading this correctly, the chest injuries had nothing to do with the cause of death, is that right? Yes, it's unclear how those injuries came about. The cranial blow was a clear cause of death. It seems probable that the victim was struck heavily with a blunted object of some description. Hmm. Anyway, that's all the information I'm able to give you. You're on your own now. Thank you, Emiliana. I really appreciate it. Don't thank me. The only reason I did this was because I can't stand to see anyone falsely accused. And my profile clearly shows that you, the culprit, in this case, bears no resemblance of a... Res well, sorry. And my profile clearly shows that the culprit, in this case, bears no resemblance to you whatsoever. Not to mention... Not to mention what? Not to mention that, despite our differences, I can see that you're obviously well-intentioned and honest. That's very big of you to say so. You're not the killer. That's what my profile demonstrates. Now it's up to you to prove my profile accurate. Goodbye, Catriel. So after all that yapping, it turns out the perfect storm is on our side. Yes, and she's a very valuable ally. The real puzzle now is that bruise on her Miss Clover's chest. How did it get there? She's out here in the shop from a blow to the head. No signs of a struggle. The dent and mannequin head on top of the cabinet. And the bruising on the victim's chest. Aha! I wonder. Because you know what I'm thinking. Like I said, I, she, I think she tried to chain the mannequin head and she couldn't. I thought she like slipped or let it fall. But maybe something else happened. Like maybe a heart attack or something like that. Again, I could be wrong. Thoracic, thoracic bruising. Just a chest bruising, please. Now let's solve this case, shall we? Yes, of course. Now I know exactly what happened here. You do? I do, and I can prove my own innocence. So why was she killed? That's got me scratching. Scratching my head, I mean. I've got no fleas. The birth of all the answers will be here soon enough. All you have to do is wait. The killer's coming. Here. Hello? Katria Layton. Here you are. Now I've got you. Uh-oh, he's cornered us. Ah, right on cue. Good. Miss Layton! Cat! Is it you who's got me, or the other way around? What? This mystery is history. I'm gonna be honest, his voice is way different from what I was expecting. Yes, the orchestrator of this plot is someone driven by extreme jealousy. Jealousy of my success. Isn't that right, Chief Inspector Royal Britannius? Really? His name is Royal? Oh, <laughs> please. You're behind all this, aren't you? You're the one who set me up. No. 
And I, of course, am innocent. <laughs> what are you saying, Cat? The Chief Inspector? Really? Are you off your rocker? Explain yourself. The two of you have always competed with one another for success in your careers. But you've been losing more and more ground each day recently, haven't you, Chief Inspector? So you concocted an elaborate plan. What plan? When you found out that Inspector Hastings was benefiting from my puzzle-solving skills, you started thinking. You decided to frame me for murder. And discredit your rival as someone who solicits the help of criminals at the same time. She's got it wrong, hasn't she, Britannius? I thought it was always just friendly rivalry between us. How could you do something like this? I mean, murder? Uh, let's not jump to conclusions, Inspector. Your colleague may be a right royal pain in the Britannius, but a murderer he is not. You've lost me. Ms. Price was trying to fetch down a mannequin's head from on top of a cabinet. Unfortunately, it fell on top of her, striking her a deadly blow to the skull. But you said Britannius planned it. How could he have planned that? You have the order of events in reverse. The Chief Inspector was the person who discovered Ms. Price's body. It was only afterwards that he conceived of this whole plan. You really wanted to get ahead that badly? I was born with nothing, you know. Absolutely nothing. For me, power and prosperity is the be-all and end-all. If you beat me to the top, I'd be a failure again. A nothing. A nobody. It was the extent of the bruising on Miss Price's body that mystified me at first. But it was because of how hard you tried to resuscitate her. Isn't that right? Yes. <laughs> Poor woman. So I think that proves it. A merciless competitor? Yes. A murderer? No. Wouldn't you agree, Inspector Hastings? I suppose that just about sums it up, yeah. <laughs> Okay, before I read the box, you do realize that it's still technically a crime that he pretty much not only accused her. I'm not, okay, I'm not sure if it's a crime, but he not only, uh, what's the name? Not only did he accuse an innocent person of murder, which by the way is clearly wrong, he also pretty much, I, I want to say he tampered, but pretty much led us through an investigation that, for nothing, wasting, wasting police force. The incident involving Miss Price was a very sad affair all around, but the people of Chancellor Lane came through for me. Thanks to them, I was able to clear up the false accusations of murder for which I was so heinous framed. I will never forget the faithfulness of everyone who stood by me so loyally and believed in my innocence. <laughs>